Testing, testing. So I was reading the Bible yesterday. Uh, I haven't read the Bible cover to cover ever, um, so I figured I might as well do that. <clears throat> I also haven't read the Bible just in a long time, period, because, you know, I'm not Christian anymore, uh, and I have a lot of other things taking on my time. But I, I found an audiobook on Audible because I'm, su I'm subscribed to Audible, um, and I figured I might as well, you know, listen to it, whatever. I don't have much else to do. Um, and I got to, I, I got through most of Genesis. I think I'm on Genesis 36, I want to say. It doesn't matter exactly where it is in the Bible. Uh, today I want to talk about the story of Jacob. <laughs> because, like, it's a really popular story. Jacob was the brother of Esau. Um, and he also was the father of Joseph. You know, the guy with the coat of many colors. The one that they made the DreamWorks movie about. But it's a really weird story. You don't really think about how weird it actually is. Um, because there are a lot of details that are either left out or you don't really correlate them with Jacob. At least I never did. So, basically, and I'm going to get things ordered wrong. I know I said I read it last night, but the, the details, to me personally, matter more than the actual order of events. Just because of how I read the events in the Bible and how I, you know, how I, what my relationship is with the theology. Anyway... So Jacob was born, I forget the father's name, it doesn't really matter, but Jacob was born as a twin with his brother Esau, right? Uh, so Esau came out first, he was covered in hair, he was, uh, it said he was red, um, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming that means he had red hair, uh, and I guess maybe darker skin because he was out in the sun. Uh, it does say he was born red though, uh, and I guess he was born as a baby covered in hair, I don't know. Anyway, Jacob came out clutching Esau's heel. Right, so he's grabbing his heel on the way out, uh, and he came out just after. And now Esau was a hunter. He was always outside. Yeah, he was working in the fields, all that. Jacob was more inside. He would, you know, cook and, um, you know, that sort of thing. He was, he was the inside brother. Esau was the outside brother. So Esau, one day, comes home from a long hunt. He, he barges into the tent. He's like, Jacob... I am so hungry, I need food now. Give me some of that soup you're, you're making, because Jacob was making soup because he was inside a lot and he doesn't have much else to do, I guess. <laughs> so, so Esau, uh, starving, he's like, dude, I need some of that soup. Uh, he's, Jacob, he's like, mm, yeah, I mean, I could give you this soup because you're my brother, but I, I mean, I can't just give you free soup. This soup, like, I made it, you know, it took work. I can't just give you my work for free. Uh, how about you give me your birthright as the firstborn? Because, you know, traditions and biblical literature. Anyway, <laughs> Esau's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Just give me the soup. So Esau just sold his... So Jacob just uh, manipulated his brother into selling him his birthright for a bowl of soup. Um, I just... That's important later. So <laughs> later on, um, Esau is going to be blessed by their father, right? Because their father, uh, you know, tradition, whatever. So, uh, and, and his mom always preferred Jacob over Esau for whatever reason. So Esau, he goes to hunt for a deer or whatever, an elk, I don't know, it doesn't matter, for venison to, uh, to offer his father as a, as an offering so he can get the blessing, right? So his mom, meanwhile, ordered, or prepared venison for Jacob to give to him. So Jacob goes to his father, covered in sheep's hair, uh, in order to convince his father that he's Esau because the father is blind and old and all that. So he takes his venison that his mom prepared, takes it to his dad. His dad's like, well, how did you get this so fast? What? Um, or he's like, like, I guess he needed to be convinced that it was Esau first. And he's like, ah, oh, which, which of my sons are you? And he's like, ah, oh, I'm Esau, even though he very clearly sounded like Jacob. So he's like, uh, come here so that I may feel you, so that I know that you're Esau, because Esau was way hairier than Jacob. And he felt the sheep hair, and he's like, ah, oh, well, I guess it's Esau. He's like, my son, give me, a, give me a kiss. And his son kissed him. Jacob kissed him. And he's like, ah, oh, well, you smell like Esau, too, because I guess he rolled around in dirt or something uh, to smell like the field. So, <laughs> and he gives him the venison, and then he blesses him. So Jacob has, just as a recap, manipulated his brother to steal his birthright, or to... I guess, get his birthright for a bowl of soup. Um, he has lied to his father to steal his brother's blessing uh, because of his favor with his mom. I just, 
that's important for later. <laughs> Jacob's not a great guy. Um, anyway, so his mom's like, dude, you got to get out of here. Your brother's going to be pissed. <laughs> you need to get out of here before your brother like tries to kill you or something. So Jacob gets out of there with his father's blessing um, and his brother's birthright that happened years ago, whatever, or how, whenever that happened. It doesn't really give a solid timeline. Esau comes back and he's like, oh, dad, I got you venison. And then his dad's like, oh, but you already came in and got your blessing. And Esau's like, what? That wasn't me. And he like starts crying to his dad, like, give me a blessing. I need a blessing. Isn't there anything you could bless me with? And then he blesses him with something that was significantly less uh, significant than what he blessed Jacob with, I guess. Anyway, so Jacob takes off. Uh, he sleeps on some rocks because... I guess he, he, he didn't have... Well, I guess it would make sense that he didn't have a pillow. It was ancient times. Uh, so he sleeps on a rock. And he has he has a dream. Uh, this dream is the uh, infamous Jacob's Ladder. And not the child's toy or the electrical thing that Electro Boom almost killed himself with. Um, like the actual Jacob's Ladder. It's a ladder going up to heaven with God at the top. And he's like, ah, oh, you're blessed or whatever. This place is sacred, something, something. Um... So God has blessed Jacob, who has stolen his brother's blessing, lied to his father, and manipulated his brother to get his birthright. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so Jacob makes a little monument or whatever with the rocks, blesses, consecrates the place, whatever, with oil, um, and then he takes off to this place where his family was living, his uncle. I don't remember his uncle's name, it doesn't matter. Um, and he's and he stays there for a while uh, and his cousin the this this girl named rachel he's like dude uh, to his uncle he's like dude your your daughter rachel she's hot <laughs> can i marry her uh, i'll do i'll do anything i'll work for you for seven years to take rachel's hand in marriage and his uncle's like yeah sure uh you can work for me for seven years and take my daughter's hand in marriage so jacob works for this guy for seven years <clears throat> wedding happens they consecrate the marriage and then the next morning like the the sun comes up and it's not it's not rachel it's her older sister leah who jacob doesn't like very much i guess uh and jacob's like ah oh, dude what the heck you said you were gonna give me rachel and he's like oh but i mean it's uncustomary to give the the, the younger daughter before the older daughter so then <laughs> so then he works for seven more years to marry rachel because his uncle lied to him um lied yeah i guess that would be a lie uh and then he ends up loving rachel more because i guess she was prettier or something um and so in response to this god makes rachel barren uh oh also the uncle gave each of his daughters a bond maid that'll come up later um so so he makes rachel barren oops sorry i punched my microphone so she can't have kids uh and leah he blesses her with a lot of kids. I think it's like four. Um, and then Rachel's like, what, dude, what the heck? God hates me. Give me children, Jacob. And then Jacob's like, oh, but I can't because God, I, I'm not God. I think something like that. <laughs> Paraphrasing a little bit, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so so Rachel is like, I will take my bondmaid and have children with her. That way it's like I had your children. So he takes her bondmaid, has children with her, um, I think one or two, um, something like that, some some number of children, uh, and then Rachel's like, oh, see, kids, or something, <laughs> um, and then Leia has a couple more kids with him and is like, yo, take my bondmaid too, so that she also may have kids with you, so he has kids with her. So at this point, I think he has 11 kids. I think it's, I, I want to say, and this might be completely incorrect. It really isn't important what the exact numbers are. I think he has six kids with Leia. He has three kids with her bondmaid. And then he has two kids with Rachel's bondmaid. Uh, Rachel has no kids. She's still barren. Um, and they, and then he talks to his uncle. He's like, look, dude, I've been living here for a while. Uh, I'm going to take off. I hope you don't mind. So he takes off uh, with, with his with his two wives and their bondmaids and all their kids uh, and some flocks that he's shepherded or whatever, uh, some cattle, whatever. He has he has a bunch of things that he's taken with him. Um, and he, on his way to where he was going, I forget exactly 
I forget exactly the order of events. One of these two things happens before the other, but I don't remember which, so I'm going to say them in uh, the order of increasing absurdity. So Esau shows up with 400 men going towards them. Um, and Jacob's like, ah, oh, shoot, we're going to die. <laughs> I did horrible things to my brother. So he, he realizes it finally. Um, and he like bows down to his brother and he has everyone bow, bow down to his brother and, and the 400 men. And then Esau runs up to him, gives him a hug. It's like, ah, oh, dude, it's fine. I don't care. It's just a blessing and a birthright. <laughs> it's whatever. It's almost, it's not, not like a huge customary thing that completely influence our entire culture or anything. Um, anyway, so his brother forgives him. They, he takes off, I guess. I don't know. He's not really mentioned for the rest of the story. Uh, he is mentioned after the story of Jacob, but it's just that he had, I didn't, I haven't read that chapter yet. It's not important. <laughs> it's not what I want to talk about. So anyway, Jacob keeps going to wherever the heck he was going. I mean, again, this might have happened before. I don't remember. Um, he starts wrestling with a dude. I don't remember why he starts wrestling with the dude, but he starts wrestling with the dude. The dude touches his thigh and breaks his thigh or his, his hip bone or whatever. Or it was like out of socket or something. His, um, his femur was out of socket from his pelvis. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't really um, focus on that very much. It turns out this guy was God. <laughs> this man wrestled with God. Uh, and God's like, oh man, good job, dude. You wrestled with me for... The, through the entire night because they wrestled until the sun came up um and god's like oh your your name isn't jacob anymore you are now israel um which like okay what <laughs> so let me give you a, a real quick re recap this guy manipulated his brother to take his birthright uh he lied to his father he stole his brother's blessing he got blessed by god <laughs> <coughs> he worked sorry he worked for 14 years to marry someone um and then he had children with the wife that he loved less and her bond servant he had wife he had children with his his favorite wife's bond maid uh he left his uncle's place he his brother forgave him and then he wrestled with god and then god was like yo good job i'm blessing you again just gonna let that sink in for a sec. Anyway, <laughs> then they then they keep going to get to wherever the heck he was going. Oh yeah, and God was like, yo, you're gonna have, I think this happened during Jacob's letter. I don't remember if it, if it happened during Jacob's letter or while they were wrestling. God's like, oh, you're gonna have m more children than the dust to the earth. So basically he's gonna have a lot of kids and like kings will come from his lineage because God likes to, um, God likes to, what's the word I'm looking for? Bless, I guess. Uh, reward manipulative lying thieves I guess anyway <laughs> uh, they keep going um, and they get to wherever the heck they were gonna settle it doesn't really matter I don't remember what the place is called uh, and they settle there and then he has, and then Rachel ends up having a couple of kids named Joseph and Benjamin and then from there you know you go into the DreamWorks movie and then, yeah um, so interesting story that no one really talks about the absurdity of I just think it's pretty interesting. Um, this is more of a historical thing than an actual theological thing. I think it's pretty absurd, and I don't know how you could think it wasn't absurd. I didn't think it was absurd when I was a Christian, though, and I think that's pretty interesting. It's just something to think about. Nothing really profound or whatever, but I just think it's funny how weird the story actually is, and you don't really ever think about it because no one ever talks about the weird parts. Just like, oh yeah, Jacob was the younger brother, and then also Jacob, Jacob's ladder, and also Jacob turned into Israel and he gave birth to Joseph, you know, for the DreamWorks movie. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. This was a fun one. Uh, nothing really too important about it. Um, I love you all. Thank you for watching, and I don't know how to end this.